Hang out there. So we're in the last week of December. December 28th to be exact. That means people are starting to think about New Year's resolutions. I'm thinking about them, right? It has a negative connotation to it, neg uh, like New Year's resolutions. Like, it's a plan we're going to make, and we know we're not going to follow through with. <laughs> so, you know, like, hey, I'm going to start eating healthy January 1st. I got kale shakes going on. I got asparagus. I got chicken breast. And January 3rd, I'm at the Taco Bell drive through feeling defeated. So listen, I'm going to give you a New Year's resolution I'm making. <clears throat> this way, if I don't stick to it, you can put a comment down below and say, Hey, Harry, you talked about that on December 28th. What you were going to do, and now you're not doing it. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're right. Then I'll delete the video. <laughs> so here's uh, one of my New Year's resolutions. I'm going to start speaking the truth to people. That doesn't mean I'm lying to people right now. That just means that uh, a lot of times I'll approach... A conversation I might be having with a family member or a friend or a loved one or something like that in a, in a gentler, kinder way, then really I should be approaching a situation. Here, I'll give you an example. I have a friend of mine that I've been friends with for about 10 years now. And we speak about once a week, once every other week or so. And the topic of conversation is his dislike the dislike that he has of his job. He won't just come out and say, hey, I hate my job. But it'll come across like, hey, can you believe my boss made me do this again? And instead of telling him the truth, like, well, then quit. I'll say something like, you know, maybe the boss is having a bad day. You know, can you look at it from his angle? I'm trying to get the guy into a, a mode of acceptance or more tolerance or so, so that it's easier for him when he goes to sit in his cubicle that he could still work at that job. I should probably be more truthful to him. Like, you've been on the job for 10 years. Like, quit. <laughs> I'm anticipating what he's going to say. He's going to say, hey, listen, I got a monthly nut of $4,000 and I got a, a wife and two kids at the house. I can't just quit. I need the health care benefits and stuff like that. And I would say, well, then stay. <laughs> Hey, Harry, this isn't going like it usually goes. Usually you give me some good feedback, like <clears throat> maybe the boss got something going on and I can look at it from a different angle and, you know, then I go back in and I feel so much better, Harry, and why aren't you doing that? <clears throat> the truth is, if it's been this bad for 10 years, it's probably going to be this bad for another 10 years. It's a hard pill to swallow, Michelangelo. I'm just calling him Michelangelo. I don't want to give him a... His real name because I don't know I'm talking about him. So, Michelangelo, I understand that jumping, going out and doing your own thing, your own business, stuff like that is scary. But complaining every day about the job that you have, that's got to be, that's got to be torture. You dread going into the cubicle and you call me up and a topic of conversation between you and I is how much you hate your job, how stupid your boss is. I bet you take the dislike of your job and the frustration and the stress that you feel. I bet you take that home to Mary Ellen and the kids. I'm completely making up these names. Mary Ellen, I don't even know a Mary Ellen, really. Well, I have a cousin Mary Ellen, but I'm not talking about her here. And Michelangelo is coming back. Now, again, Michelangelo is fictitious. Okay, the name. Michelangelo comes back to me and says, Well, you know, I'm 48 years old. It's not that easy just to, to cut ties with this business. I mean, I don't know what I would do with the health care benefits and like the monthly nut I told you, or Mary Ellen's not working right now. So I just, I don't have the answers for you, Michelangelo. I like to throw the name in there because he knows that I care. I don't have the answers for you, but I could tell you. I don't want to spend 40 hours a week at a place that I dislike as much as you make it sound that you dislike your place. So it's either not as painful as you're making it out to be. Or it is as painful and discomforting as you are making it out to be, and yet you choose not to do anything about it. So here's a couple options for you, because I want to speak the truth. Matter of fact, Michelangelo, this is one of my New Year's resolutions, speaking the truth. Bet you didn't know that when you gave me a call. <laughs> How about going out and getting your own business? Ooh, that's a big jump. 
I don't think so. Matter of fact, I don't even know if Mary Ellen would support me. Hmm. That's a whole other topic, okay? All right, well, how about starting to send out your resume for other jobs? Yeah, you know, I've been here for 10 years, and I might be able to make this work, Harry. That's my name. That's the real name. I said, all right, well, here's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm going to give you some advice. I've always been a good employee. And the reason why I was always a good employee when I was working for somebody is because I know how to follow orders. It's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people to say that out loud. I know how to follow orders. It's not the it's not demeaning. It doesn't minimize what you do. It doesn't 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 have any kind of negative connotation to it unless you put one there. I think I really came up with the fact that that's why I was a good employee because I know how to follow orders after I was in the army. I realized that in the army things are a lot clearer than out in civilian life. I was only in the army for three years. I was a little bit older than the majority of people that were going in there. I think I was 22 and a lot of the kids were 17 or 18. But those couple of years made a big difference. I could see things a little bit differently. And I knew, and at the time it was a pretty hard pill for me to swallow too, that I was low man on the totem pole. You know how you know you're a low man on the totem pole in the military? The amount of stripes you got on your shoulder. It's real easy. He's got two stripes. I got one. Mm, I think he's in charge. <laughs> Out here in this, uh, this environment, it's not so easy to tell, you know? All right, so listen. Back to Michelangelo. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. I mean, for many of the videos that I've made, I talk about my love of being a real estate investor and the independence that I feel and the freedom and all that kind of stuff. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with being an employee. It just wasn't my thing. I tried it at a hundred different jobs. Yeah, really, over a hundred jobs. Not like 30 and I'm saying a hundred. I mean, I really had over a hundred jobs, okay? I could never fit in. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with being an employee. Diane, Diane's an employee. She's an amazing employee. Not only does Diane know how to follow orders, which I really, I don't think I would just come right out and just say, hey, you know how to follow orders. She'd probably smack me if I just said that, but it is true. But Diane also adds another little something, something in there. And this is what I would say to Michelangelo. Are you treating Joe Blow, that's his boss, completely made that up. Are you treating Joe Blow's business like it's your business? Well, what do you mean? It's not my business. Why should I? He's making all the money. Well, 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 well. Michelangelo tends to freaking just. This is what I find out. Or this is what I have found out. And a matter of fact, Diane is a great. Diane's my wife. You guys never met her. But if you did, you would see that this is not just lip service. Diane is a great employee. She knows how to follow orders. But above and beyond that, she treats the business that she's in, whatever business she would be in as it was her own business. She's conscientious. She goes in early. She stays late. She never calls out. A matter of fact, at the end of the year, she gets a check for her unused sick, sick time. <laughs> Who does that? But besides that, she pays attention to detail. She treats other people that are in her office with respect and dignity. She's got about 15, 20 people working under her. They value her at her job because she treats that business like it's her own. And that's the example I would give to Michelangelo. So listen, if you don't think you could jump ship and go out and start your own business, and you think that the hassle is too much to put a resume together and go see what else is out there, then how about treating the business like it's your own business? I got to tell you, if you change Michelangelo, this is kind of deep if you want to write it down. It's funny how when we change, it looks like other people change in situations, but really it's just us. The life gets better. So anyway, that's my New Year's resolution. If Michelangelo calls me, hopefully he'll call me tomorrow so I don't have to do this for a couple more weeks. <laughs> but if he doesn't call me until next week, I want to be truthful with Michelangelo because ultimately I care about him. I care about his happiness. I care about his success. And really, how good of a friend am I if I'm not telling him the truth? So, Harry's New Year's resolution. I want to be truthful with people. So... 
for you guys because I know you're hitting subscribe and you're hitting like and then you're going to start putting comments down there. You're going to be like, hey, Harry, be truthful with me. What do you think of this situation? <laughs> Remember this conversation I had with Michelangelo.